Welcome to Woke Nation. I'm Peter Hayes. Um, I want to preface today's podcast by making clear my point of view on the movement known as Hashtag Me Too. First, I have extraordinary um, sympathy towards anyone, male or female, who has been the victim of rape or any kind of sexual crime or harassment. It's disgusting that there are people out there that prey upon innocence and to satiate satiate their own perverse cravings in turn rob others of their innocence. I think rapists, proven rapists, should be castrated. If you commit such an act, you've foregone the opportunity to enter into any meaningful sexual relationship with someone else in the future because by your actions you've totally denied another that possibility as well. Okay, so I have no sympathy whatsoever for rapists, which should go without saying, but in today's world you got to clarify that. Um, I think as far as the accusations towards Kavanaugh, if they were true, which I do not believe at all, but for the sake of argument, if they were true, um, he didn't rape anyone. There was groping with Ford, and then the two of them were broken up, and in the case of these new accusations um, with Ramirez, well, she can't remember much of anything that happened, but at worst, it seems like he flashed her. So he's not a rapist, even in the worst-case scenario. <clears throat> um, but the Me Too movement, I'd, for all it's good, and it has done some good in um, exposing um, some of the more deviant men out in the culture today, and some women, too, um, what's his name, uh, who just committed suicide, uh, Anthony Bourdain's wife, I think, was just, uh, she was one of the first accusers of Harvey Weinstein, um, so she was one of the leading faces of the hashtag Me Too movement, and she's just been outed as a, uh, as having some of her own problems, um, having a sexual relationship, I think, with a 17-year-old, which in California is, I think, below the age of consent, I think it's 18, I could be wrong on that, but for some reason it was viewed as illegal at the age of 17 with her, um, so there's people on both sides, uh, and it's, it's really, um, brought a lot of this to the forefront obviously bill cosby and um uh, obviously harvey weinstein bill clinton um and some of these other men uh and that's a good thing of course Uh, you don't want people like that being able to uh, abuse and abuse and rape and molest their way through their entire lives and never seemingly face justice or have their accusers be able to bravely come forward and and uh and and speak about what happened um but i think to an extent there's for the good it's done it's also there is a negative side to it um first off i think that in a in a good culture in a good society there shouldn't be a need for a movement while it's done some good in highlighting um the uh the issues and the men out there um these are the things that me too talks about every young man and every young girl should be taught uh from a very early from a very early age and it's because they're not being taught these things that these movements are springing up you know um and have that you're ha- even having to talk about a movement like hashtag me too uh it's because uh children are being raised um without the like men without this chival- chivalry um and the idea that they should be protecting women instead you have a culture which sexualizes women largely and and then wonders why these kinds of things happen now that is not i am not in any way saying it's the fault of the women i am not saying that but you can't our culture seems to want to have things both ways. They want to have their cake and eat it. They want to they want to claim that things like pornography and and uh, sexualized photo shoots and and you know women and and men walking around basically naked on the beach even um, is just you know the uh, the beauty of the human body and we're just we're just uh, empowering people women particularly by uh, letting them show the beauty of what a woman is. Um, 
but you know young men who are growing up don't see it that way they don't see this as empowerment or beauty or anything at least not the beauty you're talking about they guys who are getting growing up um, and are dealing with all their hormones you know at a freakishly high level are you know see this as a sexual thing and um you know, when you have movies, just as an example, like American Pie and the slew of other movies that came out after it, that just, you know, kind of present this idea that, that men are just there to get laid and women are there to spread their legs for them. Then, I mean, like, is it any wonder that that this idea of protecting and respecting women has gone out the window? And that's not the only thing. I'm not basing it just on American Pie and a few bikinis at the beach. But, I mean, these things are indicative of, like, the mentality um, that is behind all this. And so what you're seeing is a whole rash of sexual crime and instead of really talking about why it's happening they want to create a movement you know a movement that raises awareness well that's good on one hand i guess but the movement doesn't talk at all at least not in the true sense about why these things are happening instead it talks about you know toxic masculinity what the hell is that you know they they want to uh, feminize men and it just it's not going to work um all it, 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 you know that and that's a bunny trail i'm not going to go down with the uh, the whole reclassification of genders the erasing of genders that's going on but um yeah, I, d I don't see it as a positive thing on the whole. I think it's good to out these guys, but I think the very fact that you have to have a movement like this says that something we're not doing something fundamental, uh, fundamentally that we should be doing when we're raising our kids. They're not being taught the values and the morals that they should have that would make it so that such a movement didn't even need to happen. The fact that it needs to happen says there's something extraordinarily wrong with how we're raising our kids, period, end of story. So it's not going to solve anything. Just bringing awareness to it is just going to make you more aware that it's happening all the time. But that's not going to stop it. It's not going to solve the problem. And nobody's looking deeper to see what the problem really is, except for pointing the finger at all men, toxic masculinity it's uh anyway but um let's set all that aside for a moment because what i'm here to really talk about is the kavanaugh th thing uh situation which is what everybody's talking about you can't get past it you can't get away from it um but turn off the emotion just for a second I've gotten into some arguments and debates online already over whether Miss Ford is believable, her story, and some women are saying yes, they believe her. Just hold those thoughts. Personally, I don't think you can view the accusations against Kavanaugh without understanding the wider context of what is happening here. The Democrats have decided to die on this hill. They are making a last stand out of this whole Kavanaugh confirmation. Why, you may ask? Let's not forget that Brett Kavanaugh is widely viewed as a judge that would swing the stance of the Supreme Court from liberal to conservative, and he would be a lifetime appointee, just like any other judge. But that's very important. He's there to stay once he gets in, and they can't stand that idea because of who he is and what he represents. So if he gets appointed, the country will live with his decisions as long as he is alive and physically able to serve. Um... But the real reason the Democrats are foaming at the mouth uh, at the idea of Kavanaugh isn't just that he's conservative, and it isn't even the fact that just the fact that Trump appointed him, although that drives them insane on its own. Uh, now, what's at stake here, and what's really the focal, the bottom line, the core issue that is being ignored in all the hysteria over these bogus allegations? What's really at stake here is Roe v. Wade. Um, that's what all this is really about. Both sides know it. Whether they're talking about it at the moment or not, this is what it's about. All right, don't be fooled for a second. Don't let them uh, take the spotlight off of the real issue here. The uh, politicians, and especially in today's society, are masters at, at using sensation and these 
these uh these these key words and and emotion to to make, take your focus off of what is really happening this whole thing is really about roe v wade okay don't ever forget that kavanaugh is widely widely viewed by both sides as someone with the potential to be that deciding vote that could overturn roe v wade now abortion is the liberal democrats ultimate sacrament it is the core of their values, their beliefs, their entire view on the social structure of the country. I firmly believe that they will do anything to protect the right for women to choose abortion. Anything. To put it bluntly, it's the right to murder babies. That is what is at stake. And they are trying to protect Roe v. Wade with the tenacity of desperation. They are desperate. These accusations against Kavanaugh have to be viewed in that context. Then there's also the, but there's also the manner in which they are they were revealed. Diane Feinstein sat on Miss Ford's letter for weeks, maybe months, from what I've heard, before dropping it right after the hearings were completed. This was strategic. It was dropped at the moment when it could create the maximum amount of chaos and controversy. By the way, the accusations too, if you really look at them are impossible to either be proved or disproved really um so that it makes it the perfect accusation because it will always leave kavanaugh under a cloud of doubt as to whether he really did this because he can never actually disprove it and they can't prove it so it just kind of hovers there and who what they're doing is playing on people's emotion like do you really want to confirm some guy where this is always going to be there uh, it's incredibly clever. Sick, but clever. Um, in a more just world, though, Dianne Feinstein would be prosecuted for withholding evidence and obstruction for not turning the letter over immediately. Remember, she sat on it for weeks. Uh, but that won't be discussed. Um, but then there's both these accusations. First, Miss Fords is 35 years old. No one, zero, nobody she has pointed to as a witness has corroborated her story. In fact, several have denied the possibility of it having um, taken place. Uh, they have denied they were present, even though she claims they were. And several more denied ever hearing about it, ever, until now. Until now, 35 years later, when she decides to drop it just conveniently right now never mind that uh kavanaugh was uh a uh public high-ranking uh judge in the second highest court in the land and worked under george w bush i believe for t and this was over a 10-year period um so he was a very public very known figure in the second highest court in the land for years and now all of a sudden now it matters so much that they tell their story it, I mean, it's so transparent, it, it makes me wonder how anyone could possibly believe it. Um, a slew of women who knew Kavanaugh during that time period and later in his life, up till now, have come forward to testify to his character. Uh, they all say he has, he's an exemplary character. He He's... Um, a great basically a choir boy is what what it comes down to the guy is has an impeccable record an un, unimpeachable record he has great moral cal, uh, character um great moral fortitude he's he's basically just a good man and this is destroying all that um all over just abortion um and Kavanaugh, of course, totally denies the charges, both of them. Uh, and what he says is they are nothing more than a uh, smear campaign, and I totally agree. So the Democrats are putting pressure on Republicans to delay the vote, launch an FBI investigation based on nothing. You can't launch an FBI investigation into nothing. Um, they want to have Kavanaugh drop out all on the basis of two charges that would never hold water in any court in America. And what's even more insulting is Mrs. Ford and the Democrats' outrageous attempts to subvert our process of justice in this country.
They are viciously saying that Kavanaugh is guilty merely because of his politics. The senator from Hawaii, and I can't remember her name right off the top of my head, was quoted as saying that she didn't believe him because he's conservative. Then there's the perverse demands they have for the hearing. Miss Ford wants no lawyers present, and she wants Kavanaugh to speak first, and then she will present her accusations. That is a total slap in the face to our entire justice system. We have a system that assumes innocence until guilt is proven. It gives the accused the right to have a legal system to defend him and ask pertinent questions of the accuser to, his, um, to find out the truth. And lastly, Kavanaugh cannot speak in any court of law until the accuser, Miss Ford, has faced him on the stand and presented her accusation against him face to face. Then he presents his defense. That is how it should be. And to demand that it be otherwise just because Miss Ford can't, uh, just can't emotionally handle being in the same room as Brett Kavanaugh is absurd. Women do it all the time. Men do it all the time. Families stand in the same room as a man who's killed their their mother, their father, their you know wiped out an entire family, and and the extended family has to stand there and look him in the eye. You know this stuff happens every day. It's not easy. It's it's brutal, but it has to happen. That is how our justice system works. You cannot accuse somebody without being in the same room as them, presenting your accusation and giving them a chance to defend themselves. That is our system of justice, and it works, and it's a good one. And to suggest that we do otherwise is incredibly wrong, and it sets a precedent that will destroy. Uh, the our system of justice and put so many people at risk of just being accused and railroaded into prison right off of that. Uh, but the Democrats don't care. They want blood. That's all. They want Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh gone. That's it. Their hope is that if they bury him under enough supposed victims' accusations that he will drop out. And if he doesn't drop out, they want to delay the vote past November, banking on the hope that they can gain a majority in the Senate, at which point Kavanaugh wouldn't have a prayer being confirmed anyway. And all this is just sickening, of course. What the Democrats are doing is satanic, cynical, evil. It is perverse. And they talk about women being outraged at Kavanaugh and the Republicans. Women should be outraged at them. No woman should ever vote for this pack of Democrats ever again. They are using the hashtag MeToo movement, using rape and sexual assault as a political weapon. They are manipulating people's emotions with that. It is evil. I could also launch into Ramirez's story, a story which is openly ludicrous, I'm sorry, but but it is. I mean, if some sort of definitive proof comes out, hey, I'll admit I'm wrong. You know, I, I don't care. I'll admit I'm wrong. I'll admit it. But her story, just like Miss Ford, stinks to high heaven. Okay? It doesn't even sound like a group of college kids. Who yells down the hallway, Brooke Kavanaugh just pushed his penis in Debbie's face? And she doubled down by saying she's fairly sure that uh, that they used his full name. Nobody uses full names like that at a party in college. You may think that's a trivial little thing, me bringing that up, but I went to dozens and dozens and dozens of college parties. I had an apartment where parties were thrown all the time. Nobody talks like that. Nobody yelled, Peter Hayes did this or that down the hallway to anybody. Nobody even knows your name half the freaking time at these parties, much less your full name, and much less they, would they even use it had they done, had they, did they know it. You know, it's absurd. It, it's just it, very clearly somebody who was never even there, doesn't even know the way kids behave or talk. That's not the lingo that they use. That's not the way they talk, especially while intoxicated. They don't use it, your full name when they're sober and trying to be polite. Do you think they're going to use it when they're blacked out? Get out of here. Who believes this nonsense? No real witnesses, no proof, no, e no evidence. Um, 
And then, and then she tries to elicit some kind of faux outrage by saying she brushed up against his penis and it was horrifying or so, something like that because she's Catholic and would never dream of touching a penis unless she's married. But yet she had no problem getting wasted at a college party, basically blacking out. But heaven forbid a penis. Not until marriage. Oh, you know, give me a break. Who believes this nonsense? Again, no witnesses, no real witnesses, um, no proof, no evidence. She openly admits uh, she couldn't remember what actually happened. This took place supposedly over 30 years ago. Give me a break. Don't fall for this bullcrap. But then her lawyer uh, magically and suddenly coaxed the truth out of her. How do people believe this stuff? Now again... If it really, really, really did happen, and, and absolute proof comes out, then yeah, it's not good for Kavanaugh at all. And yes, I'd be glad to see him go. If both of these accusations, or even one of them, but especially both of them, are proven to be true, then yes, um, he should step down. It should be over for him. But I don't see that happening. Not at all. Um... Finally, if any Republicans, uh, senators are hearing this, grow a pair of balls. You are allowing the Democrats to push you around using tactics which are morally appalling and legally reprehensible. You're walking on eggshells with this issue for no reason. Because you're afraid women won't vote for you in November if you confirm Kavanaugh, no one will vote for you in November if you don't. This entire issue is vital. You guys were voted into office for this very reason. Do your freaking jobs already. You're allowing the Democrats to set a precedent here that would allow them to destroy literally anyone with baseless accusations. Imagine a world where all it took was an accusation and your career, your life, your family, your future. All you've worked for is flushed down the drain and destroyed based on lies. Do the right thing here. Push the vote. Confirm Kavanaugh. Do your freaking jobs for once, you spineless sellouts. I'll leave it there. There's really not much you can say after all that. You can subscribe to Woke Nation. Oh, and I gotta get going. You can subscribe to Woke Nation on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, and follow the Facebook page. Uh, you can send me angry emails at roadnottaken04 at juno.com. Good night and God be with you. <laughs>